switched all my hustling skills and all my communication skills that I had onto the music part of it. And I went about it the same way. I hit hot spots and I sold my dope. I ran up to people. I told them to get a taste of my dope. I told them I had the best dope and it was all on CDs. And as soon as they got a taste of that CD, as soon as they tasted that dope, they wanted more of it. So they had to have the whole CD, you know. Dope House Records is an independent record label based in Houston, Texas. It primarily releases hardcore underground southern hip-hop. Dope House Records was founded in 1995 by Carlos Coy, aka South Park Mexican, aka SBM, who would release his debut album Hillwood that same year. The album title is Hillwood comes from the unincorporated neighborhood of the South Side region of Houston. He sold this album out of the trunk of his car even flea markets, and at car shows for just $5 a piece. Prior to this project, SBM had been pursuing a Christian rap career. He wasn't having much success at that, so he decided to focus his attention on hardcore rap. SPM, aka Carlos Coy, didn't have a very easy upbringing. His father was a Marine, and his mother dropped out of high school. Their marriage would end three years after SPM's birth, and his older sister Sylvia would end up playing the motherly role. He attended various elementary schools before entering the music magnet program at Welch Middle School. His family moved from Southeast Houston to South Park. This is where he would attend Woodson Middle School. SPM would go on to attend Milby High, where he was expelled after just one year. He would eventually obtain his GED and enroll in a community college for his associate's degree. Unfortunately, he failed all the classes at the community college he was attending. He would go on to work at a chemical plant for minimum wage, but after being again unemployed, he would work door to door as a perfume salesman. After failing at that, he began a career path of selling crack. For two years, SBM promoted his debut release, Hillwood. By 1997, he was selling drugs and making music to go with it. Not only that, he was signing artists to his Dope House record label. Rashid, Loji, and Pimptress were the first acts signed. He began work on his second album, Hustle Town, and would release it March 1998. The album contains hit single, Merry Go Round, which was an underground smash, and it broke him out of Texas. Shortly after the release of Hustle Town, SBM would sign another artist to his label by the name of Baby Beach. Baby Beach would go on to change his name to Baby Bash, which I'm sure you're a little bit more familiar with. Hustle Town had a lot better beats than Hillwood. Streets on Beats, featuring Low G and Block of Rock, were bumping all around the hoods in Houston. My personal favorite track on the album is a song called Wizard of Oz. It almost has a horrorcore type of vibe. SPM was heavy in the streets. He was getting dumb paid too. Money he'd never seen. Both his drugs and his CDs were selling, making him the man in his city. And he was starting to associate himself with the best that the South had to offer. DJ Screw's own screwed up click. DJ Screw wanted to sign SPM, but SPM was content on doing his own thing. That didn't stop SPM from appearing on multiple DJ Screw tapes, doing collaborations with Big Hawk, Lil Kiki, and Lil Flip. Power Moves the Table is the third solo studio album by SBM. Released on December 22, 1998, the album is considered a classic. It contains a screwed up bonus disc by DJ Screw called Screwing Up the World. Power Moves has collaborations with multiple different Dope House artists, along with a feature from Kid Frost and a feature from Bushwick Bill of the Ghetto Boys. The Third Wish to Rock the World, sometimes just called The Third Wish, is the fourth album by SBM. Released November 23, 1999, The Third Wish is considered a Houston area classic. With the main single being High So High getting so much buzz, it landed on the charts. The album too would chart. This would be the first time for SBM. Peaking number 89 on the hip hop R&B charts, with over 60,000 copies sold within the first week. This would eventually lead to SBM signing a joint venture with his label and Universal Music Group, which earned him a $500,000 advance plus national distribution. The second single from the album contains Baby Bash and it's called Wiggy Wiggy. This would be his introduction to the industry. 
SPM Presents the Purity album is a compilation album of all of his label mates. It was released August 15th, 2000. The album debuted number 57 on the Billboard 200 and 26 on the R&B hip hop charts. It contains the single, You Know My Name, which peaked 99 on the R&B hip hop charts and 31 on the rap charts. By this point, Dope had signed many more notable artists to the label. SBM was obviously the key act, but now he had Lo G, Rashid, heavy hitting producer Happy Perez, Baby Beach, Juan Gotti, and Lucky Luciano. Dope House must have been living in the studio because SPM would release his sixth album the same year. December 12, 2000, Time Is Money would be released. The album would peak number 170 on the Billboard 200 and 49 on the R&B hip hop chart. Baby Bash was heavily featured on this album, appearing on seven of the songs. Time Is Money is one of SPM's best projects. Songs like Medicine remind fans that SPM is a great storyteller. On the song Boys in the Cut, he samples NWA, basically giving us the Mexican version. Most of his songs with Baby Beast are super funny and perverted. The early 2000s, SPM was working hard, dropping mixtapes and compilations like Revel Park and the Screwston series, along with his collabs with the Lone Star Riders. He was even featured on Lil Flip's debut project, Leprechaun, and a separate collaboration with Fat Joe called South Park, South Bronx. Um, tell us about the Latino rap scene and Hispanic rap scene in Texas, man. What is it looking like around here? Because I know it's not just SPM. Well, you know, um, uh, I'm from South Park, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I went to Woodson with Scarface. I went to Worthen with uh, Cadillac Anderson and a few of my homeboys. But um, as far as, uh, you know, Latino, uh, uh, black, uh, you know, white, Asian. Uh, you know, I ain't trying to be the best Mexican rapper, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be the best Latino rapper. I'm trying to kill them all, you heard me? That's real, that's real. So that's real. how we get them, but... Uh, SPM was a very talented MC, no question about it. Very lyrical, great storyteller, with a variety of topics throughout his music. He wasn't just talented for a Mexican, he was talented for a person. Everyone's past has a way of catching up to him. SPM had some skeletons in his closet that weren't public. On September 25th, 2001, Houston police arrested Carlos Coy on aggravated sexual assault of a child who was nine years old. Carlos Coy, SPM, would be released from county jail after posting bail. The incident occurred on Labor Day weekend that year. A Texas county jury indicted Coy on December 10, 2001 and added another charge over a 1993 incident. He impregnated a then 13-year-old girl who later demanded child support payments from him. Wait a minute, I'm not done yet. Two more charges were added in the following March of 2002 for sexual assault of two 14-year-old girls. Coy was at this point held without bail. 35-year sentence for the rapper known as the South Park Mexican for sexually assaulting a nine-year-old girl last year. News to Houston, Cindy Garza joins us now live downtown with more. Cindy? Well, Rachel, Carlos Coy show, showed absolutely no emotion as the judge read the sentence of 45 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Now, at one point, Coy turned around to his family and he mouthed, I'll be all right. Then he turned away. That's when Judge Mark Ellis called him up to the stand. He literally read him the right act. Mr. Coy, I have spent 17 years in this courthouse, and in that time I've seen more sex offenders than I wish to remember. But one thing I've found over time is that sex offenders have one trait in common, and that is that they are all liars, and you are no exception to that rule. You have lied to your family, you have lied to this court, you have lied to this jury, you have lied to your audience every time you go out there with your positive message, knowing that your life is not as it should be. Uh, you have spent this court's time, this jury's time, trying to explain, trying to discount, trying to excuse your conduct. There is no excuse for your conduct. You have testified to this jury. I, I guess you believe this, that you are convinced that you are a victim of your own celebrity in this situation, that if you were a plumber or a, a doctor or a priest or anything else but a rapper, you wouldn't be in this situation. Well, the fact is that there is only one victim in this case, and it is a nine-year-old girl. Now, 
that is reality and you need to deal with it. All people in this state, in this county, in this city, and in this courtroom are equal in the eyes of the law. You have received a fair trial, you have received due process, and the jury has spoken. And it's time for you to face the music. It is the order of this court that you be delivered to the Sheriff of Harris County and to the Director of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division, where they will carry out the jury's verdict for 45 years. And a ten thousand dollar fine will be given credit for your back time to see the bail. The nine year old victim's father then took the stand. He said, quote, Carlos, you really did it this time. You got caught up in your own lies and your own deception. I trusted you, my daughter trusted you, and you let us down when you molested her. Yes, Coy, you are one sick puppy. End quote. Again, Carlos Coy, South Park Mexican, the Houston rapper. 45 years in prison for sexually assaulting a nine-year-old little girl. South Park Mexican was sentenced to 45 years in prison with parole eligibility in 2024. Since the sentence, he has maintained his innocence. One allegation, he claims the girl he impregnated was working in a strip club, so he assumed she was of age. On the second allegation, he claims that he was set up by a former friend who was mad that he hooked up with his girlfriend while he was in jail, and that their daughters used to be best friends. They were just having a sleepover when the friend of SBM's daughter asked to be taken home. SBM obliged and took the daughter home, back to his former best friend's house. SBM claims his former best friend was jealous of the adultery that took place and convinced his own daughter that she was molested. The daughter, at the time, claimed the whole event may have just been a dream. I think it's also important to note that since the sentence, the daughter has grown up into an adult and she herself has recanted her statements on social media. To be clear, you do not consider yourself a pedophile? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, I'm not uh, a child molester. You know, I mean, uh, I've made some mistakes maybe, but uh, not with uh, any child. I was there, I know what happened. I was there when the female that he was having an affair with made the phone call to Dope House Records saying she wanted $20,000 from Carlos because he was having an affair with her because Carlos was fucking with her. So Carlos is fucking with his best, it's his best friend's girl. That's why the kids, that's why the kids were staying out of his house because they were friends, they grew up together. So he was fucking her on the side while he was married. His best friend was in jail. He started fucking the girl, the wife. The wife's daughter is the one staying night at their house because she stays with, you know, the friends with Carlos's daughter. Okay. So she calls Dope House one day, wanting twenty thousand dollars, or she's gonna call it, or Carlos is gonna get arrested. And they're arguing. I'm right there on the phone with two, uh, watching Tootie, which is Carlos's brother, talk to her. It's like, you know, I don't want to say her name, but what's wrong with you? And she's like, I want twenty thousand. He hangs up the phone and says, "Man, this bitch is crazy. She wants twenty thousand. He calls Carlos on speakerphone while I'm there. Carlos. She's calling, she's acting up. Everyone knew they were having an affair together. She wants $20,000, you're gonna go to jail. And Carl's like, man, fuck that bitch. That bitch is crazy. I'm gonna give her no fucking money. Because Carl's, you know, stopped fucking with her back with his wife, blowing up, making so much noise. So. Carl's in South Park. Right? Stopped, Carl's stopped from her. Carl's like, man, fuck that bitch. I ain't giving her no fucking money. So about three months later, two or three months later, that's when the, the, it comes in. All of a sudden, she's getting charged with touching the daughter that Carlos brought her home at four in the morning because she didn't, she wanted to go home. The whole thing is the daughter, and I was at court. The craziest thing was the court because it, it, even in court, there was no evidence. No, the girl, the little girl even said it could have been a dream. She didn't feel good. Carlos brought her home at four in the morning is what happened. When Devil Strike is the ninth album by SBM. Released on October 3rd, 2006, the CD sold approximately 50,000 copies within its first week, landing 46 on the US 200 chart. The CD consists of 15 songs. The album also comes with a free screwed and chopped version of the album by Michael 5000 Watts. The album is made up of mostly pre-recorded songs before a sentence. The song When Devils Strike tells the story accurately of what happened in the second incident I described. The Last Chair Violinist is the 10th solo album by SPM and the third since the start of his incarceration. But this was the first time that most of his music was being recorded on jail phones. Surprisingly, you could hardly tell. It was mixed so well and a lot of real instruments were used, mostly violin, hence the title of the album. The mixing may have been done so well that fans could hardly tell 
that it was recorded in jail, but the media and all of the victims, they could tell, and they weren't happy that SBM was potentially making money. A Houston rapper serving time for aggravated sexual assault of a child is set to release an album in just days. South Park Mexican has been recording from jail, despite laws keeping inmates from profiting from their crime. Reporter Sherman Chow wanted to find out how the rapper can do what he's doing and how his victims are reacting. 11 News investigates. I'm SBM. this rap game on the cream, I like cream. Time was when South Park Mexican was a rapper on the edge of national fame. Time now passes in a state prison for Carlos Coy. He has served six of 45 years and sings a different song. Do you know what it is to kiss your babies through a window? See your whole life pass through a window? Carlos See insists he was innocent of molesting his daughter's nine-year-old friend. Paternity tests do prove he fathered a child with a 14-year-old girl in a separate case. They, they say all publicity is good publicity, but I think in this one matter... A question uh, soon put to the test. In 2006, he was back in the Harris County Jail on appeals. Coy says then he secretly recorded several songs from a payphone with the help of other inmates. They use plastic bags, but somehow they make thick string out of it that's real hard. And they, they tied it from the staircases to the showers, and it just went all these different directions, and they had all these wool blankets and uh, actually built me a soundproof uh, <laughs> some vocal booth there in the county. At first, Dope House Records told us that some of the songs from the new album would be jailhouse recordings, the rest done from before SPM went to prison. Well, now the record label is refusing to say whether any of those jailhouse recordings have ever been released. Physically and mentally and emotional. She was really, really hurt by him. Yo. Wherever the material was recorded, it is now on sale. South Park Mexican's victim is now 16. She's bracing herself to hear from and about SPM again from unwitting friends. They'll listen to, to that music and then they'll somehow bring it up, mention it. Prohibiting criminals from profiting from their crime. Well, Carlos Coy isn't paid, so he doesn't profit. Brother Arthur now wholly owns Dope House Records, where Carlos's wife and family work. And even from prison, Coy can crunch the numbers from his last CD. We come out the box with about 100,000 cells, uh, and we make eight bucks a CD. So, uh, you know, we, we, we make that the first month about and then things kind of slow down. That leads to another question, the civil judgment against Coy. We haven't seen no money and I, I don't even, we don't even talk about it. When pressed, SPM claims his last CD actually lost money and any profits would not be in his name. She made eight bucks a CD and there's not twenty thousand dollars to pay off the civil judgment. It, 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 and that's true. We made about uh, a, a million in a million point one, uh, maybe on the last one, yeah, but we spent about a million point two. But the victim's family, once close friends with the Coys, really wants now a sincere apology. SPM is still recording and releasing music from prison. The mixing on his new stuff isn't really as good as it was on the last chair violinist, but albums like Son of Norma have a few good songs on them. Dope House still has a lot of good artists they associate with. Lo G, Rashid, Lucky Luciano, and Juan Gotti are all Texas legends. Unfortunately, Dope House has yet to see the success they once had. Back when Universal was backing them, and when SPM was free, they were on top of their game. SPM, he's up for parole in 2024. This video, it's not to promote his false innocence. I don't believe that he is innocent. Do I believe he did everything he was accused of? Eh, I don't know, maybe. Do I think 45 years is a fair sentence? Uh, maybe? He's 51 now, so his prime is likely way in the past. One thing that is for certain, this dude could wrap his ass off. And Dope House, Dope House could have been huge had it not been for these unspeakable events that took place. Boys,